This is a video describing the Pebble RAT task or the Remote Associates test. Um, and this is a picture of what it's going to look like when you run it. The RAT task is um, basically a word game where you're shown um, three words that are all associated with a concept or another word. And you have to guess what that third one is. And it's. Um, it's not too different than what appears in some puzzles and things like that, but it's one of these things where if you don't see the word immediately, uh, it takes a while to get, and people sometimes study this in the context of insight problems where um, you can't really make steady progress toward it, all of a sudden you get it. Um, and people have also stud used this for looking at incubation effects and things like that. Um, there are a lot of uh, rat problems out there. Some of them are called compound remote associate problems, CRAP. Some of them are called remote associate test problems. Um, many of the existing problems um, are accumulated at, at this website, socrates.berkeley.edu. It's Tilda Kalmstrom. Um, Mendick and Mendick in the 60s uh, uh, first initiated some of these. Bowden and Jung Beeman in 2003 collected normative data for some of these. <coughs> and so there's a lot of, not only are there um, a lot of problems out there, there are also normative data about how easy they are and how difficult they are. Um, so initially I uh, just took uh, one of the big sets, I think, um, so, uh, one of the big sets that had normative data, I think the Jung Beeman paper, and implemented these as um, different se sets of different difficulties. And so they had identified these as three different sets, and um, some of them are easy, some of them are more difficult, and some of them are very difficult. Um, in terms of their difficulty. So these are sort of typical falling actor dust. They all go with star. They don't really necessarily go with one another. Um, there's another set uh, that has different normative data that's also that also appears in a file. A lot of the normative data appears here. But these were just for reference and um, if you wanted to use these, you'd have to edit files in in the Pebble task to to make that work. So these are still all available, but as of the latest 2.0 version, what I've done is I've picked from these two sets 30 30 associate uh, problems, remote associate problems that I th that I think are pretty good. Um, and the restriction I decided to use was that they should all be uh, word associates, not just um, sort of similar meaning synonyms or something like that. So we look at some of these RAT problems. You get stuff like widow bite and monkey, and you can have a spider bite and a spider monkey, but you can't, spider widow isn't like an associate, or widow spider. There's a black widow spider, but it's not like um, a phrase where you have a spider bite or a spider monkey. And so that was one that we wouldn't have used. Uh, similarly, you know, you can have a skunk cabbage. <coughs> um, you can have boiled cabbage. King's cabbage is something that um, I think most uh, undergraduate populations have no idea what that means. So that was eliminated. And so rather than just using the normative data sets, I picked a set that I thought was pretty good from these two. Um, the normative information is still available on them, but um, just to have a really good uh, custom set, this is the custom set we picked. And it, no, this is not the custom set we picked. We, we put them in RAT2 and that will be available. And so there are um, I guess 29 problems that were selected. Um, and if you want to use, and so this makes it easy, if 
you want to use this set, you can use this set. If you want to create your own set or pull it from these other files, you can. And you just need to, each problem is specified by, in a CSV file with four columns. And the last one is the answer. And I make all of the answers uppercase. I don't think that will matter um, in terms of scoring or anything, but um, it makes, uh, the typing happens all in uppercase, so it makes it sort of uh, more consistent if the answer is in uppercase as well. So um, if you want to customize it all um, within Pebble, Battery, Rat, um, let's see, Pebble starts like this and it's under Battery and then RAT. We can look at some of the parameters that are available to um, fix. So uh, many of these are for the older version and that's still available. If you were to um, change use custom to zero, it will automatically use the problems within the RAT file. And um, there are three sets, easy, medium, and difficult, and, and you can set those um, up. You can also see if you want to mix them together or do them blocked separately, and how many um, uh, how many you want to do in a row before you give a short break, how many problems you want to give total, and um, things like that. So you might, if you want to use this new set, you might want to give a, a block size of 10 so you get a, a break after every 10 problems. And you can also then, if you have a set of say 100, you could give every person 10 randomly. And that's what would happen if you did uh, seed random, it will pick just 10 from this set. But all of this is overridden if you use a custom file. And what's going to happen in the custom file is it's going to use all the problems in the custom file um, or up, and up to max problems of the custom file. A couple more. Um, if you want everyone to use the same subset, you can uh, turn seed random to 1, and then it'll be a, a semi-random order, but everyone will get the same semi-random order. Um, and if you turn it off, then it, everyone will get a different order and a different subset. Okay, so there's a couple things that are interesting um, that could be manipulations you try or you might want to try it one way or another. One is whether to give feedback, meaning um, whether to give the right response. And so if you're using this for an insight problem uh, solving experiment, you probably don't want to tell them the right answer because then you're not going to be able to come back later after uh, after it sort of percolates and um, see if they can answer it later. So you can turn feedback off. So they're given the problem, they're just told if they're wrong or not. And allow retry, you know, there is a time limit for each one of 30 seconds. And <coughs> if allow retry is off, which is the default, they give their answer. And if they get it wrong, they move to the next one. But if it's on, meaning it's one, then you have 30 seconds to get the right answer. So you can try, and you can try again, and if you um, if you get it wrong, you get to keep trying. Um, so those are different options you can tr try. And then this last one, use custom, was just sort of a lot of these are overridden, and it will use the, the problems that are in that file. Um, so let's look at what it looks like to run. Um, it says, in this task, you'll see a set of three words. Each one will be related <coughs> in some way to a single answer word. Your job is to determine what the word is. For example, if you see this, the answer would be ache. Heart, head, and back, the answer would be ache. It also gives a second one, which uh, probably most of the default problems aren't like this. Uh, ribbon, arrow, and curtsy um, are all related to the word bow or bow. Um, and so I don't think any of the problems I have are like this, but uh, you could have problems like this. So you could maybe change the instructions if you want. And now the task starts. And so this timer here in the middle um, shows how much time you have left. And that's going to be a 30 second timer. And so uh, let's say I think this is bucket. And it's um, 
stock, st maybe stock is right, uh, stock broker, stock as a shop, that's not right, and the right, um, so it doesn't tell me the right answer because I have that turned off. Uh, hall, car, and swimming, uh, we have pool, is, seems like a reasonable answer, so I hit this and it'll tell me it's correct. Um, and so on. So I get 30 seconds. I can enter things and correct them. One th decision I made, uh, so I think the right answer is tape here. One decision I made um, was that if you happen to type the right answer but don't hit enter and time runs out, it will count it as correct. So if I sit here and just let it go, it should tell me it was correct, even though I didn't hit enter. Uh, this is useful because if you're typing it at the very last second and um, you run out of time before you hit enter, it will count it as incorrect otherwise. Um, that's just a decision I made um, that even if you haven't entered it, it will see what you've typed so far. And, and in, on the off chance that you got it right, um, you know, it's hard to get these wrong by it's hard to get these right by accident, um, so if you get it right, you probably really intended to get it right and just haven't um, just haven't hit enter yet. Okay, so that's the basic way this task works. We can look at what the data files look like, and um, it will save two data files. Uh, one is that are going to be sort of related. Um, let's see. And it's going to, let's see, I was, actually I'm in the wrong subject. So this is the one I just did. And if I do the by response, um, you can see that it has three lines for the first one where I tried three different things. So if you're interested in what they're trying, what they're typing, um, then uh, this will give you sort of the intermediate things that they tried. Um, but this is sort of misleading because it has multiple rows for each trial. So there's a f the final one is probably the one you want to analyze and it will give you one row per trial and you hear this just gives the last answer and if that last answer was if they got it correct their last last answer will be correct and if they didn't get it correct it's going to ignore all the previous answers but it tells you how many tries i tr i made so if i tried it three things and got it right i could still record see what um see that here um so it gives the block the trial the three uh stem words, the correct answer, how many tries, what my answer was, how long it, um, this is the absolute time of when the response was made, this is whether it's correct. Uh, this is always going to be one in this file because that tells you whether it's the final try and that's, that would be a way of filtering this down to this. Um, the time and the total time taken, so in these cases it was 30 seconds because I used the entire time. Uh, in this case, it was 12 seconds. Um, and I think this is probably just adjust. It's just basically this adjusted. You can see that um, this is the start, um, which is right after the end time of this trial. So I'm guessing that it's within a couple seconds. And it's just sort of the time between trials is the only difference. So uh, that's the data format that you get. And I don't think this can be translated. I think that there's so much, um, there's no, yeah, there's no ability to translate this directly. Um, if you want to create n different um, problem sets or use a, a rat problem that's normed in a, another language, that would be fairly straightforward to do. And you would need to open up the file in a Word 
um, processor or like a text editor and translate this text, the instruction text and things like that for it to make sense. Um, there's really not much to it. There's just 300 lines of code and a lot of that's um, things like um, comments and things like that. So um, there's a few lines that give instructions, but because all the materials are in uh, English, I decided that I wouldn't uh, bother making it translatable until someone came up with some new materials I could include in another language. So if you have, if you're interested in translating this, uh, send me uh, your materials and we can uh, make a Spanish or a German or a French version or something like that. Um, all right, well, that is the Pebble Rat task, and it's available by downloading Pebble at pebble.sourceforge.net. Thank you.